Alrighty, I just gotta find chapter 12, because you did 11. Alrighty, chapter 12, Piper's POV. I got it to this, keeps coming off. Alright. Piper couldn't explain how she knew. Stories of phantoms and tortured souls had always freaked her out. Her dad used to joke about Grandpa Tom's Cherokee legends from back on the res, but even at home in their big Malibu mansion, looking out over the Pacific, whenever her dad were counting the ghost stories for her, for her, she could never get them out of her head. Cherokee spirits were always restless. They often lost their way to the land. Yeah, they often lost their way to the land of the dead, or stayed behind with the living out of sheer stubbornness. Sometimes they didn't even realize they were dead. The more Piper learned about being a demigod, the more convinced she was that Cherokee legends and Greek myths weren't so different. These Eidolons acted a lot like the spirits in her dad's stories. Piper had a gut sense they were still present, simply because no one had told them to go away. When she was done explaining, the others looked at her uncomfortably. Up on the deck, Hedge sang something that sounded like in the Navy, while Blackjack stomped his hooves, <laughs> whinnying in protest. Finally, Hazel exhaled. Piper's right. How can you be sure? Annabeth asked. I've met Adelons, Hazel said. In the underworld, when I was, you know, dead. Piper had forgotten that Hazel was a second timer. In her own way, Hazel too was a ghost reborn. So, Frank rubbed his hand across his buzz cut hair as if some ghost might have invaded his scalp. You think these things are looking, uh, lurking on the ship or... Possibly lurking inside some of us, Piper said. We don't know. Jason clenched his fist. If that's true, we have to take steps, Piper said. I think I can do this. Do what? Percy asked. Just listen, okay? Piper took a deep breath. Everybody listen. Piper met their eyes, one person at a time. Adelons, she said, using her charm speak. Raise your hands. There was tense silence. Leah laughed nervously. Did you really think that was going to? His voice died. His face went slack. He raised his hand. Jason and Percy did the same. Their eyes had turned to glassy, had turned glassy and gold. Hazel caught her breath. Next to Leo, Frank scrambled out of his chair and put his back against the wall. Oh, gods. Annabeth looked at Piper imploringly. Can you cure them? Piper wanted to whisper and hide under the table, but she had to help Jason. She couldn't believe she'd held hands with... No, she refused to think about it. She focused on Leo because he was the least intimidating. Are there more of you on this ship? She asked. No, Leo said in a hollow voice. The Earth Mother sent three, the strongest, the best. We will live again. Not here you won't, Piper growled. All three of you, listen carefully. Jason and Percy turned toward her. Those gold eyes were unnerving, but seeing all three boys like that fueled Piper's anger. Gold eyes, what did that what does that remind you of? Luke. Doesn't have any connection, but I just, you know. Or relevance, I should say. Okay. You will leave those bodies, she commanded. No, Percy said. Leah left out a soft hiss. We must live. Frank fumbled for his bow. Mars Almighty, that's creepy. Get out of here, spirits. Leave our friends alone. Leo turned toward him. You cannot command us, child of war. Your own life is fragile. Your soul could burn at any moment. Piper wasn't sure what that meant, but Frank staggered like he'd been punched in the gut. He drew an arrow, his hands shaking. I, I faced down worse things than you. If you want to fight, Frank, don't. Hazel rose. Next to her, Jason drew his sword. Stop, Piper ordered, but her voice quavered. She was rapidly losing faith in her plan. She'd made the Adelons appear, but what now? If she couldn't persuade them to leave, any bloodshed would be her fault. In the back of her mind, she could almost hear Gaia laughing. Percy growled in, an, in a very unpercy like way. Daughter of Pluto, you may control gems and metals. You do not control the dead. Annabeth reached toward him as if to restrain him, but Hazel waved her off. Listen, Adelons, Hazel said sternly. You do not belong here. I may not command you, but Piper does. Obey her. She turned toward Piper, her expression clear. Try again. You can do this. 
Piper mustered all her courage. She looked straight at Jason, straight into the eyes of the thing that was controlling him. You will leave those bodies, Piper repeated even more forcefully. Jason's face tightened, his forehead be beaded with sweat. We, we will leave these bodies. You will vow on the river Styx never to return to this ship, Piper continued, and never to possess any member of this crew. Leo and Percy both hissed in protest. You will promise on the river Styx, Piper insisted. A moment of tension. She could feel their wills fighting against hers. Then all three Adelons spoke in unison. We promise on the river Styx. You are dead, Piper said. We are dead, they agreed. Now leave. All three boys slumped forward. Percy fell face first into his pizza. Percy! And Beth grabbed him. Piper and Hazel caught Jason's arms as he slipped out of his chair. Leo wasn't so lucky. He fell toward Frank, who made no attempt to intercept him. Leo hit the floor. Ow, he groaned. Are you all right, Hazel asked. Leo pulled himself up. He had a piece of spaghetti in the shape of a three stuck on his forehead. Did it work? It worked, Piper said, feeling pretty sure she was right. Oops. I don't think they'll be back. Jason blinked. Does that mean I can stop getting head injuries now? Piper laughed, exhaling all her nervousness. Come on, lightning boy, let's get you some fresh air. Piper and Jason walked back and forth along the deck. Jason was still wobbly, so Piper encouraged him to wrap his arm around her for support. Leo stood at the helm, conferring with Festus through the intercom. He knew from experience to give Jason and Piper some space. Since the satellite TV was up again, Coach Hedge was in his cabin, happily catching up on his mixed martial arts cage matches. Percy's Pegasus blackjack had flown off somewhere. The other demigods were settling in for the night. The Argo 2 raced east, cursing, cursing, cruising several hundred feet above the ground. Below them, small towns passed, like, passed by like lit up islands in a dark sea of prairie. Piper, Piper remembered last winter flying Festus the Dragon over the city of Quebec. She had never seen anything so beautiful or felt so happy to have Jason's arms around her, but this was even better. The night was warm. The ship sailed along more slowly, smoothly than a dragon. Best of all, they were flying away from Camp Jupiter as fast as they possibly could. No matter how dangerous the ancient lands were, Piper couldn't wait to get there. She hoped Jason was right that the Romans wouldn't follow them across the Atlantic. Jason stopped amidships and leaned against the rail. The moonlight turned his blonde hair silver. Thanks, Pipes, he said. You saved me again. He put his arm around her waist. She thought about the day they'd fallen into the Grand Canyon, the first time she learned that Jason could control the air. He held her so tightly she could feel his heartbeat. Then they'd stopped falling and floated in midair. Best boyfriend ever. She wanted to kiss him now, but something held her back. I don't know if Percy will trust me anymore, she said. Not after I let his horse knock him out. Jason laughed. Don't worry about that. Percy's a nice guy, but I get the feeling he needs a knock on the head every once in a while. True. You could have killed him. Jason's smile faded. That wasn't me. But I almost let you, Piper said. When Gaius said I had to choose, I hesitated and... She blinked, cursing herself for crying. Don't be so hard on yourself, Jason said. You saved us both. But if two of our crew really have to die, a boy and a girl, I don't accept that. We're going to stop Gaia. All seven of us are going to come back alive. I promise you. Piper wished that he hadn't promised. The word only reminded her of the prophecy of seven, an oath to keep with the final breath. Please, she thought, wondering if her mom, the goddess of love, could hear her. Don't let it be Jason's final breath. If love means anything, don't take him away. As soon as she made the wish, she felt guilty. How could she stand to see Annabeth in that kind of pain if Percy died? How could she live with herself if any of the seven demigods died? Already, each one of them had endured so much. Even the two new Roman kids, Hazel and Frank, whom Piper barely knew, felt like kin. At Camp Jupiter, Percy had recounted their trip to Alaska, which sounded as harrowing as anything Piper had experienced. And from the way Hazel and Frank tried to help during the exorcism, she could tell they were brave, good people. The legend that Annabeth mentioned, she said, about the mark of Athena. Why didn't she want to talk about it? She was afraid Jason might shut her out, but he just lowered his head like he'd, he'd been expecting the question. Pipes, I don't know what's true and what's not. That legend, it could be really dangerous. For who? All of us, he said grimly. 
The story goes that the Romans stole something important from the Greeks back in the ancient times when the Romans conquered the Greek cities. Piper waited, but Jason seemed lost in thought. What did they steal? She asked. I don't know, he said. I'm not sure anyone in the Legion has ever known. But according to the story, this thing was taken away to Rome and hidden there. The children of Athena, Greek demigods, have hated us ever since. They've always stirred up their brethren against the Romans. Like I said, I don't know how much of that is true, but why not just tell Annabeth, Piper asked. She's not going to suddenly hate you. He seemed to have trouble focusing on her. I hope not. But the legend says that the children of Athena have been searching for this thing for millennia. Every generation, a few are chosen by the goddess to find it. Apparently, they're led to Rome by some sign, the mark of Athena. If Annabeth is one of those searchers, we should help her. Jason hesitated. Maybe. When we get closer to Rome, I'll tell her what little I know. Honestly. Honest. But the story, at least the way I heard it, it claims that if the Greeks ever found what was stolen, they'd never forgive us. They'd destroy the Legion and Rome once and for all. After what Nemesis told Leo about Rome being destroyed five days from now, Piper studied Jason's face. He was, without a doubt, the bravest person she'd ever known, but she realized he was afraid. This legend, the idea that it might tear apart their group and level a city, absolutely terrified him. As it should, Piper. Piper wondered what could have been stolen from the Greeks that would be so important. She couldn't imagine anything that would make Annabeth suddenly turn vengeful. Then again, Piper couldn't imagine choosing one demigod's life over another, and today on that deserted road, just for a moment, Gaia had almost tempted her. I'm sorry, by the way, Jason said. Piper wiped the last tear from her face. Sorry for what? It was the Adelon who attacked. Not about that. The little scar on Jason's upper lip seemed to glow white in the moonlight. She'd always loved that scar. The imperfection made his face much more interesting. I was stupid to ask you to contact Rena, he said. I wasn't thinking. Oh. Piper looked up at the clouds and wondered if her mother Aphrodite was somehow influencing him. His apology seemed too good to be true. But don't stop, she thought. Really, it's okay. It's just, I never felt that way toward Reyna, Jason said, so I didn't think about it making you uncomfortable. You've got nothing to worry about, Pipes. I wanted to hate her, Piper admitted. I was so afraid you'd go back to Camp Jupiter. Jason looked surprised. That would never happen, not unless you came with me. I promise. Piper held his hand. She managed to smile, but she was thinking, another promise, an oath to keep with a final breath. She tried to put those thoughts out of her mind. She knew she should just enjoy this quiet moment with Jason, but as she looked over the side of the ship, she couldn't help remembering how much the prairie at night looked like dark water, like the drowning room she'd seen in the blade of her knife. And we're done with chapter 12. I'll read chapter 13. Oh, I forgot. Mark Fina.